Hi everyone, welcome to today's lesson. I uh, My head appears to have got a little bit wider. Hopefully the sound quality will be a bit better as a result. So, we're going to be carrying on with science and we're going to be looking at inheritance today. Now in science so far, we've looked at adaptation. That is where you adapt to your environment. You change your features to adapt. Over thousands of years, adaptation leads to evolution. That's where basically, one particular offspring has an adaptation that is advantageous, i.e. it's good. It helps them to survive, it makes them better. Because it's a good thing, that offspring lives, it then has children, and it passes that trait onto its children. Over thousands and thousands and thousands of years, all of them end up with that trait. The whole population of whatever animal it might be okay that's if it continues to be passed down now today we're going to be looking at inheritance and this is something that isn't just about humans but we tend to think about as being a human thing so let's get started okay do you know what inheritance is do you have any ideas well, you might have heard of inheritance. For example, when someone passes away, you might get an inheritance. That might be you might inherit a house or you might inherit some money or some jewellery or something like that. But in terms of science, that's not quite what we mean. But what it does mean is to get something from someone else. We inherit it. And normally, well, certainly in terms of science, we inherit from our parents and our grandparents. It's the name given for a passing of traits or characteristics from parents to their offspring. However, some things they say do skip a generation. They do go from grandparents into children. So this foal has inherited a very distinctive characteristic from its mother. And can you see what it is? So if we have a look here, I'm just going to move that over. Apologies. If we have a look here, so, we can see that this bit here, the foal also has it. Now, this is an inherited characteristic. This mark here has been passed down. So, it has been inherited. Okay. So, it could also happen in humans, of course. So, which traits or characteristics do you think you have inherited from your parents? If you think about your parents, what characteristics do you think? What do you think this boy here has inherited from his father, for example? Well, let's have a look. So we can see that he has a very similar shaped nose to his father. That's something that can be passed down. Um, we could look at hair colour here. We could have a look at the shape of the mouth. We could potentially start to think about height as well. So let's just make a list of these quickly. So the ones we can see on here is we've got hair colour. OK, we've got hair colour. We've also got nose shape. We have also got, well, I can see as well, I didn't even point it out, but we've got eye colour. Now, those are just some of the traits that could be inherited. These are some of the others. So we've got hair colour, eye colour, your build, i.e. your sort of your height and your size, roughly. Not 100%, but quite often you can inherit that. Your nose shape, mouth shape, your knobbly knees, if you've got knobbly knees. Some other characteristics are a little bit weird. So, for example, rolling your tongue. You can only do that if either your mum or your dad can do it. It's inherited. If neither of them can do it, you won't be able to. If you can prove me wrong, please feel free to. Uh, if your second toe is longer than your big toe. Apparently that's inherited too. Wouldn't have known that. If your earlobe is joined to the side of your head. So I will take this off for a second. If you've got your earlobe here, if it's joined to the side of your head, that has been inherited from either your mother or your father. OK. Here's some more. This is the earlobe we were talking about here. OK. 
we've also got presence of what's called a hitchhiker's thumb so if you look here you can see that this one is sort of bent backwards and the other one is more straight upright hairline widow's peak straight hairline so this bit here in the hair compared to this bit here again that's an inherited trait mild digital hair presence so that means you see if you have hair particularly on this bit in the mid part of your fingers some people don't have that now it's difficult at your age because you might not have it at all necessarily anyway but that is something that's either inherited or not so you won't be able to you might be able to see possibly if i hold it up to the camera i do which means i've inherited that some people don't So, sister one says I look like my mum and sister two says but I look like my dad. Well the way we look can depend on our inherited characteristics. You get half of your genes from your dad and half from your mum. That means you get half from one and half from the other. So you may get some of the characteristics from your mum that maybe your sibling doesn't get. But equally they could get some from their dad that you don't get. It's not guaranteed that children will get the exact same features from their parents. Some of the features just aren't inherited, not always. And that leads us nicely into variation. So what do you think variation means? If something is varied, think about a variety pack of crisps. Well, if you think of a variety of pack of crisps, that means there's difference. And that's what variation essentially means. So when we're talking about inheritance, the word variation has a very special meaning. It's not to do with crisps, I promise you. Variation occurs in a species from generation to generation. Although an offspring or a child will have some similar characteristics, I'm going to really emphasize the word some there to its parents, it will also have many different characteristics. This is called variation. So when you think about you and think about either your mum or your dad, if you're a girl, it's probably easier to think about your mum. And if you're a boy, it's probably easier to think about your dad. OK, you may have some of their characteristics, some of their features. You may have the same hair colour, for example, the same eye colour, but you won't have all of them. You have variation, i.e. you are unique, you are different. Some of the traits you've inherited, you've carried through, but not all of them. And those bits that are different are your variation. It happens all the time. It's completely normal. If it didn't happen, we would be exact replicas of our parents. Well, half of half of one and half of the other. So this is some of the ways that offspring can vary from their parents. So corn from the same parent plant could have very different colours. Sheep with white wool may occasionally produce an offspring with black wool. It can happen. Occasionally, parents produce offspring with albinism or albinoism, and that's a disorder which means there's no pigment or no colour, so it's completely white. Other variations are less visible. For example, maybe you may be less likely to get sick than your parents. Maybe you have a greater resistance to disease. Equally, you might be more likely to get sick than your parents. So there are some variations we just can't see. Now, variation can easily be seen when we have what's called a cross breed. Now, that's most easy to explain with dogs. So, if, for example, you take a poodle and a Labrador and it makes a Labradoodle. It's quite a funny word to say, actually, Labradoodle. Now, you can see the variation here because it's inherited some very clearly from the poodle and some very clearly from the Labrador, but not all of them. And that's where you can see the variety happening. Same if you take a zebra and a donkey, you get a zonkey. I mean, I can't say I've ever seen one before, but uh, there you go. First time for everything. Now, the characteristics the offspring's inherited, well, we can have a look here. So we have got here, we've got the legs. Well, I would say that they've inherited particularly the stripes from the zebra. In terms of the donkey, though, well, I would say... Yeah, it's tricky to say, really, but you probably look and think, well, the shape of the nose is perhaps more from the donkey. 
I mean, obviously, the plain colouring here, the lack of stripes, is from the donkey. Some of the characteristics, though, you won't be able to see. So, for example, perhaps the zebra was very quick, and maybe the donkey inherits it from the zebra. We can't see that, well, unless it's going to start running off the screen, which I really hope it doesn't. But it will have various traits from its two parents. Now, there are some characteristics that you have, quite a lot, some people believe, that are not inherited. This isn't something you are born with. This is something that is caused by your environment. Doesn't mean global warming. It means what's going on around you where you live, your family, etc, etc. It's something you learn. It's not something you're born with. And some people argue that you learn everything. You're not born with anything that, apart from obviously what you can see. For example, some people argue that you're in, if you're intelligent, you are born with that. You're either born clever or you're born not clever. Some people argue that we're all born the same and we all have the potential to learn to be clever based on our environment. So, for example, here, loving art. Now, you could learn, you could learn to love art because your parents love art. You could learn to love art because you have a really great art lesson one day and you think, yeah, I really love it now. You're not born with that love of art. It's something you've learnt. Equally, you might hate art and hate the very thought of it. Maths, you may think you're not very good at it. You're not born with that. You're not born thinking, I hate maths. That's the first thought that goes into your head. No, it's not. It is absolutely not. It's born by your environment. It comes out of what happens to you. So, for example, you might have a really difficult maths test. And you think, oh, I hate it. Maybe you've got a brother or a sister that says they hate maths. And then you believe you hate it too. Maybe you've got a friend that hates it. And then you believe you hate it too. You're not born hating maths as much as it may feel like you are sometimes. Same with food. Some things we, our taste buds don't agree with. But a lot of foods, it comes down to you learn to like it or not and quite often that's down to whether you've tried it or not or maybe you've had too much of it you think if you had the same lunch every single day for years and years and years you wouldn't enjoy it as much some of you are going to say yes i would if it was pizza i would i'll agree to disagree on that so some characteristics are inherited just to summarise. Some for a reason, some by chance. Some characteristics are not inherited. That might be because of a mutation, i.e. a variation and a change, or it might be because we learnt it. For example, you may learn to play the piano, but neither of your parents can. You're not born with it. That is a variation, and it's not inherited because you have learnt it. OK, now for your activity today, I, we need to keep this image of this family in mind. So I'm just going to talk about it for a minute so you can pause the video if you need to later on or go back to it. Now, this is an image of a random family that's been stolen from the Internet somewhere. Um, and we're going to think about the characteristics that are similar to their parents. So from this image here, you can see various characteristics. Now, on the next slide are some questions that you're going to have a go at answering and you can either choose to do it about this family or if you'd like to do it about yourself and your parents that's absolutely fine as well it's whatever you choose but obviously we're not going to make you do it about yourself because some people may not want to and that's absolutely fine but if you do you can do it about yourself so if you're doing it about the photograph on this slide then you're going to be answering these questions one and two. Choose the son or daughter to write about. Describe some of the characteristics which they have inherited from each parent. Some of the ones that we can see. Then number two. In what way does their appearance vary 
from that of their parents. So what about them is different from their parents? Describe some of their unique characteristics. So if you're doing the photograph, you're focusing on number one and two. If you are doing it about yourself and your family, then what I would like you to make a list of is the same, but for you. So you're going to write a list of characteristics which you have inherited from your parents. They could be physical, i.e. what you look like, but also they could be things that maybe you can't see. And then I'd like you to write a list of things about you that are different from your parents. For example, if you have a different hair colour or eye colour or, um, I don't know, uh, maybe you're really tall but your parents aren't or something like that. It might also be something that, again, we can't see. Maybe, for example, you don't get ill very often but your parents do. Maybe you um, play an instrument but your parents don't. Maybe you love art, but your parents don't. So we're looking at variations, things you have not inherited, either because you've learnt them or because it was a change, it was a variation. But the important thing is we're going to make a list of things that you have inherited and then a list of things that you have not inherited. How you choose to do that is entirely up to you. If, for example, I'm going to try and show this here, so you could make oh no hold on let me just with me two seconds everyone i'm gonna make a new slide so that i can show you some ideas so okay so a couple of ways you could do it if you're doing this activity about you and your family well you could draw a very well, you would use a ruler. You could draw a very wonky table and you could put here inherited characteristics. So inherited. And then on this side, you could put unique characteristics. And then you could make a list. Or if you wanted to, you could put a photo if you have one. I'm not expecting you to, but if you have one, you could put a photograph and you could draw arrows coming off of it saying what the feature is. For example, I don't know, brown hair. And in brackets, you would put whether that is inherited or whether it's unique. You could do a mind map. So you could put characteristics in the middle. I finally got a pen which allows me to write on the computer, so that's why I'm a lot quicker. So you can put characteristics, draw a bubble around it, and then off of it you could put different characteristics, and again in brackets you would put whether they're unique or inherited. So for example, my eye colour is blue, for example, and I would put in here, maybe that's unique. And there you go. So there's a couple of different ways you can choose to present it. If you're doing the photograph of the family from above, you can choose to use one of these ways as well. If you're doing it about yourself and your family, you can do it one of these ways. And then submit it on Seesaw, please. We look forward to seeing it. Please remember as well that no one else can see your work on Seesaw. So if you do choose to put a photograph, the only people that will be able to see it is yourself and your teachers. So you don't need to worry about anyone else seeing it. Okay? Thank you very much for listening. Speak to you soon. Bye.